Hallelujah. He's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah. You can do better than that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. How many are making that to be their personal prayer this day? Hallelujah. We desire to know him, to have a relationship with him. Hallelujah. Amen. And it's a good thing to have a fellowship and to know him. Amen. You can invite your neighbor, tell him, welcome to pray session. Hallelujah. Karibisha tuna tabasamu wengine wamekasirika tangu wiki lipo anza. But today it's a blessed day. Hallelujah. Our God has been so good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Salimia mwingine. Acha kukauka tu hivyo. Salimia mwingine wa pili. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tafuta jirani, tafuta jirani. It's a beautiful day, a beautiful Sunday, a breakthrough Sunday. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We want to praise our God this morning. Uh, I was reading a book by Kuna kitabu nilikuwa nasoma, title yake ni Breaking Down Strongholds Through Praise. It is written by Cindy Jacobs. Uh, kuna kitu hapo alikuwa nasema about the tools of praise in our warfare, how we can win our battles, the weapons of praise warfare. And number two, he was talking about clapping our hands. Hallelujah. That there is power when we clap our hands. Uh, that term clapping in the book of Psalms 47.1 that says clap your hands all you people and make shout. Hallelujah. So she was, she was saying that when you clap your hands, una, you are crushing your enemies. Hallelujah. The enemies wale ambao amekua wakikufuata. When you are clapping, you are crushing them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and she was and ukitafta hiyo neno in Hebrew, the word clap means taka. Hallelujah. Uh, taka you are pressing. Amen. You are pressing anything that that does that God is not does not desire to be in your life. Amen. So when you clap, you are tackling your enemy. Amen. Can we tackle our enemy this morning? Hallelujah. Clap your hands, all you people, and shout for King of Glory. Hallelujah. You can do better than that. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We are going to declare that Mungu wetu ni mkuu. Bwana sifiwe. Mungu wetu ni mkuu. Juma hili ametupea revelations, he has given us new territories. Amen. So, you can put your hands together to celebrate Jesus as we are going to praise him. Amen.
Who knows? Who 
God is working on us and we are so grateful. Uh, in this juncture, tunajua ya kwamba the house of God is the house of bread. Na tunajua Mungu ametu ametu andalia meza. Na kama ametuandalia meza, I know that ametuandalia hata yule mtumishi ambaye ataweza kutupatia hiyo meza. And we thank God for that. And this morning we are very blessed to have one of our parent amekuwa passionate about youth. She has a blessing in this youth department. She's a lecturer in university, Egerton University. She's married. She's a wonderful woman of God. Na ningeomba sisi wote tusimame vijana, tumebalikiwa sana asubuhi ya leo katika jina la Yesu Kristo and with a club ningetaka unisaidie kukaribisha Professor Nancy Mugai. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. We may take our seats. Um, I'm so greatly honored to be before all of us uh, to represent my Lord and Savior this morning. Um, I'm born again. I love the Lord as my personal Savior. Um, and I'm grateful uh, for the opportunity to share the Word of God. Um, I'm also happy to be with my husband in this service, so I'll ask that he waves the church. <laughs> yeah, thank you. He's my husband of uh, almost 28 years now. <laughs> and uh, when we consider what you had yesterday, what manner of love, I hope you're learning uh, from those who have gone before you and you're picking uh, important lessons along the way. So this morning, I, I, I truly want to uh, thank God for this opportunity to continue with this topic, virgins in Sodom. And, and the way I, the service has been, um, I sense the Spirit of God is in our midst in, in, in a very, very special way because a lot has been spoken about purity. And as I was waiting upon the Lord, to share today, actually, it's like the Lord was remind, asking, what should we uh, share? Well, I, well, I was asking, what should I share today? And what came to my mind was uh, virgins in Sodom, cultivating a lifestyle of purity. Cultivating a lifestyle of purity. And as we cultivate the lifestyle of purity, we're going to be asking ourselves, what is 
my responsibility what is your responsibility we have heard a lot from many servants of god on this topic and i'm hoping that you're keeping track of all the many lessons that we we have had and i allow me to refer particularly to last week's sermon when our pastor benjamin was sharing there are many things that he said many things and as he was sharing uh, at the beginning i i i kept on wondering eh, uh -huh, these things happen eh? as he kept on giving example after example so the, for me initially it was like a surprise shock you know until i remembered actually something that our father in, in the lord likes to say uh, about those people sometimes who like to talk about people and encourage other people to talk about other people and he would say that them they will not be saying anything they'll just be encouraging the other people and they would say guy <laughs> so say, mm, you know they're just encouraging the other people to talk so when i was listening to pastor benjamin um i started wondering surely what for maharibika kiasi hii ama imekuwa hivi but as I continued listening to him and as I as, as I continued reflecting I went back to my childhood I remembered being in class 5 and you can imagine how many years back that is so I will not say it so that you don't start doing the math uh, but I remember being in class 5 and having this friend of mine uh, and and there are things that she would say that were so vile so it's like the Lord was helping me to know. It's not now that things are this bad amongst our people and amongst uh, our children. No, it has always been like that. So I remember that I told myself, aha, okay. If this is the way it, should, it has been, then we really need to find a strategy of how we continue to engage with one another and how we look into helping each other to cultivate purity. I also remembered not too long ago in my own household I hosted a young man who is a relative for almost six months and so when he came to be with us I invited him of course to church and we came to church every day and after a few or maybe a month or two he gave his life to Christ and we were extremely excited we were very happy that he finally had found the Lord but a month or maybe two after, he introduced us to a girl whom he met here in church. And we were super excited because <laughs> he's mature and maybe it's about time that he settled down. And um, he, he would say, I'm not going home with you. I want to remain a bit and be with this, this new girl that I found. And of course I told him, you know, you're young in the Lord. You must grow in your faith but you must also keep your boundaries so i started like you know coaching him and helping him to walk uh, to walk the way but it, it, it's it's unfortunate because about ma a month after or maybe one and a half months after they had met he lost interest in coming to church he lost interest in reading the word and he had gotten super excited he would read the word i would find him in the morning uh singing and praising you know he had the, the tv on and he would be singing and praising he stopped doing that he stopped reading the word and, and 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 i got concerned and asked what is the problem what is happening then with time the confession came they fell into sin not once not twice maybe thrice maybe more and so he was not able to continue coming in because he felt like he was going to be hypocritical coming to church. So we would come together and I would, I would imagine he's coming to the discipleship class, but he would go elsewhere. Um, so why do I start my, my sermon this morning in this way? We're talking about cultivating a lifestyle of purity. And while we may feel like um, the things that are surrounding us may seem unsurmountable i want to share to us that we stand before you as witnesses that the lord is faithful that the lord is able to help us to cultivate a life of purity i'll read the text that has been the main text 
for this series, Virgins in Sodom, which is in Genesis 19, 4 to 8. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation. And it says, But before they retired for the night, all the men of Sodom, young and old, came from all over the city and surrounded the house. They shouted to Lot, Where are the men who came to spend the night with you? Bring them out to us so we can have sex with them. So Lot stepped outside to talk to them, shutting the door behind him. Please, my brothers, he begged, don't do such a wicked thing. Look, I have two virgin daughters. Let me bring them out to you. And you can do it with them as you wish. But please leave these men alone, for they are my guests and are under my protection. And the question I ask, or we, we've been asking in this series, how did Lot's daughters remain as virgins? Well, they dwelt among such a people. Such a people that were bold enough to come and demand that these men be brought out to them. How did they manage to maintain their integrity? When they lived amongst an unbelieving and perverse generation, just like we are. We are living amongst an unbelieving and a perverse generation. And so we must ask ourselves, what was the secret of them being able to remain pure for themselves from a sexual point of view but as I talk about purity I want us to go deeper we just saw an amazing clip a few minutes ago the, the issues with this lady was not only sexual impurity but also dishonesty character impurity isn't it eh? because they are presenting themselves to be one thing while they are something else. So when you talk about purity, it will just go beyond just sexual purity, but also purity of life, purity of character, purity of how we, we conduct uh, our business on a day-to-day -day basis. So that's a question we ask this morning. And actually the psalmist asked the same question many years ago in Psalms 119 verse 9 to 11. I'm reading from the Amplified Version. And this is what he asked how can a young man keep his way pure? And may I say, a young woman. And may I say, a man or a woman. Yeah? It is just not young. Yeah? But we'll keep the context of this text. The psalmist asked, how can a young man keep his way pure? By keeping watch on himself. That is the answer. By keeping watch on himself, according to your word, conforming his life to your precepts. With all my heart, I have sought you, inquiring of you and longing for you. Do not let me wander from your commands, neither through ignorance nor by, willfully disobe by willful disobedience. Your word I have treasured and stored in my heart that I may not sin against you. Let me read 12, actually to 16 as well. Blessed and reverently praised are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips, I have told all the ordinances of your mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of your testimonies as much as in all riches. I, I, I translate, I also read, read this in NLT for verse 13, which says, I have rejoiced in your laws as much as in riches. Then verse 15, I will meditate on your precepts and thoughtfully regard your ways, the path of life established by your precepts. I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Bana Sifiwe. So basically, the question that we ask ourselves today, how did Lot's daughters manage to maintain their purity among such a people? And the psalmist asked the same question. How can we remain pure? How can we keep our ways pure? And he's given us the answers. 
Number one, he has told us that for us to remain pure, then we must keep watch on ourselves. So the first thing is ours. The first thing is our responsibility. We must keep watch on ourselves according to his word. So we must continue to hide his word within our hearts. We must continue to ask the Lord to grant us understanding. We must continue to ask the Lord to help us. And when we look at this young man or young woman, or this man or this woman who has been asked, how will he keep his way pure? I believe that the psalmist was not talking so much about young, young men because of the fact that maybe there is always an idea that it is much more challenging for a younger person to maintain purity. Biologically, that may be true. That it might be a little more challenging for a younger man or younger woman than, of course, for an, an older person to maintain purity. But I believe that the psalmist is asking, how can this young man keep his ways pure? Because also, we know from the scriptures that train a child in the way they should go. And even when he's old, he will not depart from it. So I believe that the psalmist is asking about particularly these young people, how can they keep their ways pure? Because he believes once they learn, then they will never depart from it. And so it is our responsibility. And my prayer this morning is that somebody here will hear the word of the Lord and will make a firm decision that I'm going to learn from the Lord how I can walk in purity, how I can cultivate this lifestyle of purity. Because if I do, then even later on in life, I'm not going to struggle because I have learned I've taught myself. So I see when the psalmist is saying, how can a young man keep his ways pure? I believe he's saying, this young person has a great opportunity to learn. This young person has a, a great opportunity to acquire new ways of living that even when he finally uh, uh, gets older, he will still be able to maintain his uh, purity, he will still be able to maintain his integrity, he will still be able to maintain a lifestyle that honors God. So that's one thing we noticed from the, from the psalmist saying, how can a young man keep his way pure? But then he says, he, by keeping watch on himself, conforming his life, conforming his life to God's precepts. So let's see how we conform. I remember again last week, it was just so impactful. The servant of God as he shared, he gave an example about the games. If you are playing basketball, there are rules for basketball. If you're play, playing uh, rugby, again, there will be rules for rugby. And the rules for basketball are not for rugby. The rules for netball are not for football, isn't it? There are different rules. And if you're going to compete to win, you must live by the rules. So if you want to compete in a manner to win, you must compete according to the, the rules of the, of the game. So we must ask ourselves, what are the rules of the game of the life that we have opted to live as sons and daughters of God? What are the rules? In fact, when the, man, when the servant of God was sharing, he reminded me a song we used to sing when I was younger. And I'm so pleased this morning we sang a hymn. I think we need to sing more hymns. Eh? They're, they're so amazing, isn't it? Wasn't it powerful? Yeah, they're just so amazing, the hymns, because of the way they were, I, I think, conceived and inspired of God. So when he was sharing, he reminded me a song. This is a Kikuyu song we used to sing. That uh, I'll translate. Uh, that when I came to your house, you showed me the boundaries of your house. And you showed me the rules that govern your house. And you did this so that I may not sin against you. Because you say, those that sin against you. To I'm not too sure. I'm a very good singer, but I'll try. 
tokire gwa ku kenyonya mohaka uriori gishe die gwa ku mushe na ugishoka ukenyonya wado uri otoraga ngubaine yaku ni gwotika e konyita kaoru todo waigire mweki oru wothe ushone mwana waole amuru <laughs> so <laughs> For those who do not understand the language that it's what I was translating that when I came to your house you showed me the boundaries you showed me the rules that govern your house and why did you show, do that you you did so so that I may not sin against you because you said those that sin against you are the sons of the evil one may God help us and may God remind us what the psalmist said many years ago that we must we will keep our ways pure by watching ourselves according to his word conforming ourselves to his precepts so we must understand the rules of this kingdom we must choose to understand those rules and we must choose to follow them and when we do then the lord will be pleased of us and that's why in every house there's there are rules in fact as i was thinking about this even when you visit somebody you will find there are rules that we have set for ourselves we just don't live in a vacuum there is a way we bring order in what we do whether it is in a job whether it is um in in a house there are rules and i want to tell us the answer to living a pure life is conforming ourselves to the precepts of the word of god and when we do so then we'll find that it is easier that there are things that you not struggle with as much because you have made a firm decision in your heart and in your mind that you're going to conform yourselves to the word of god we also know what the word of god says in romans 12 verse 2 do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may be able to discern the good perfect and pleasing will of god so we really must conform ourselves we must ask the lord teach me to conform teach me to conform help me to conform lead me help me show me how i must transform my mind because it starts with the mind making a, a clear decision in our minds that we are going to be transformed in the same aspect of conforming i remember reading a book um titled loving your marriage enough to protect it and this is a book i would recommend to anybody who is about to get married and those who are married loving your marriage enough to protect it and this servant of god again puts it that we must continue to say that i love my spouse so much that I'm willing to do any and everything to protect it. And he said he also recognized that he's not confessing weakness by putting some boundaries. You know sometimes you can also think that am I am I confessing that I'm too weak? That's why I'm saying I don't cancel a woman alone as a man of God. <laughs> am I saying that I'm too weak when I say I can't uh give a woman a lift in my car like apostle says <laughs> oh you know he says no it's just a matter of putting the necessary boundaries putting the necessary boundaries and he starts the book with a very interesting story of this boss with his secretary and with time because he must interact on a regular basis when you put your guard down then it is very likely that you can get into something that is not right but it is just putting the necessary boundaries as we continue on with the some uh, text that we have read so the second point is the first one was that uh, the issue of being young is uh, we explained that the second one is about conforming uh, i'm a teacher so if you see me going systematically there with me <laughs> i'm a teacher as a profession and i think i'm also called to be a teacher of the word of god so um the, the next point it says that with all my heart verse 10 i 
have sought you, inquiring of you, and longing for you. Do not let me wander from your commands, neither through ignorance or willful obedience. What a powerful prayer the psalmist was praying. He was saying, do not let me wander. I have sought you, like many of us here. We are genuinely seeking the Lord. We love the Lord. We've made a commitment to serve him. And we seek him all the time. And the word of God now says, this is the same situation the psalmist found himself in. And he was saying, do not let me wander. And how would I wander? Because of ignorance. I could wander, not because I really want to, but because of ignorance. And so we must ask ourselves, how do we avoid ignorance? The word of God says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Hosea 4, 6. And also Proverbs 29, 18. Where there is no vision, no revelation of God and his word, the people are unrestrained. So sometimes we can wander away for lack of knowledge. But we must be, we must pursue knowledge. We must tell the Lord, help me to know what I need to know. And, 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 and know the things that I must continue to avoid. As we were coming this morning, I, I also remembered something Father shared with my husband because we were in college together. I reminded him of a brother we used to be in the Christian Union uh, together. And um, this brother got into the place where he was relating uh, with a dear sister who was outside of campus. So this sister would come to visit, to visit him occasionally. And so he was asked, how come you don't make arrangements for where the sister is going to stay when she's visiting? He said, oh, no need. No need to make arrangements. Yeah, my bed is very big. I face one side and she faces the other side. That was his answer. He said, I didn't have to make arrangements for where this sister should stay because I'm well taken care of in my house. And so when I'm talking about ignorance, that is ignorance, isn't it? Of the highest order, isn't it? <laughs> How would anybody even reason like that? You see, you might say, ah, ata huyu alikuwa mezidi. But maybe let's come back home to ourselves. What do we do? We invite them to our house, isn't it? Eh? We chat till maybe a little bit late. Yeah? And then what, what is likely to happen? And you know, I remember, in the, I, I didn't get an opportunity to watch yesterday's session on what manner of love, but the other session I did, the one that was held on the 14th uh, of February, I watched a few, uh, a few sessions. And I remember Sister Eunice, uh, uh, the, the prison worship sister sharing what happened to her when they had gone home I think it was one of the Rorashio uh, negotiations and they were coming back and I remember her making a joke saying we almost did that thing how many were in, how many were in that meeting <laughs> you remember eh? and oh, everybody shouted he said no, hug <laughs> and then everybody was disappointed <laughs> because <laughs> Because they, they thought, you know, she was saying something else. Eh? So I remember saying, we almost did this thing. Which was it? Hug. They almost hugged. Eh? So, you know, we must ask ourselves, ignorance. The, the, the psalmist is saying, do not let me wander from your commandments. Neither through ignorance nor willful disobedience. Ignorance. Do not wander because of ignorance. Uh, you know, let's, let's keep, know that the things that could lead you to sin. We know uh, how we relate, how closely we do it. We're being together in places that are not open. Those things we were taught. And I was feeling, pastor, senior pastor, that's something that we must continue to teach, to help each other. Uh, it, it is not a cake. It's not old school. I believe it is the right thing to teach. Yes, sometimes people may say, uh uh, that is old school, whatever. But I'm telling you, even when I was a student, we had a brother who was so ignorant that he would make a, such, a, such, such a statement. And of course, you know what happened? They finally did get married, but the baby was born six months after they were married. 
Yesu. <laughs> yes. <laughs> not preterm, not preterm that's all. <laughs> not preterm. Mature 6 months after they they were married. So we must avoid ignorance. We must avoid ignorance in thinking that what we watch does not affect us. We must avoid that kind of ignorance. We must avoid ignorance that what we watch, what we read, what we listen to does not influence us. That is ignorance because we know and it is scientifically proven it does affect us. The more we hear the more it influences us the way it influences our behavior the way it influences our, our perception you know even this whole debate of lgbtq i will tell you many of us are much more tolerant than maybe senior pastor was when he was a young person because it was not heard of we did not talk about it but every now now it is all over isn't it it is in the news it is in the cartoons it is in every other movie that you watch and that is a, a strategy and it is a strategy of the enemy so we must not be ignorant that what we watch that what we read that what we listen to does not affect us i'll tell you this morning as we were driving in we just passed a car and i don't know what, for whatever reason my husband decided to read the number plate and said dj Okay that was a number it was KDJ okay <laughs> so he just said DJ and the moment he said that do you know what i remembered thank you mr dj for playing my song <laughs> i mean that's what i remembered he said dj and immediately my mind remembered thank you mr dj you may not I, they have laughed but those who are a little older there was a very popular secular song okay <laughs> i can see pastor was also lost <laughs> pastor benjamin yeah the, when we were younger there was a very popular but secular song that would be sung thank you mr dj for playing my song so the moment he said it i remembered so we must be ignor we cannot be ignorant that what we hear can you imagine how many years those are you know more than 40 years probably possibly yeah when that song was popular but just him saying dj brings back those memories my dear ones won't you help won't we help ourselves by being very selective in what we see what we allow ourselves to see what we allow ourselves to listen to what we allow ourselves to watch because you see it remains with you for many years sometimes even getting it out will take a much longer time so this this servant of god was pray, praying to to god do not let me wander from your commandments neither through ignorance nor willful disobedience you know purity is not absence of sin purity is absence of willful disobedience and on to read to us Psalms 19 13 and 14 keep your servant also from willful sins may they not rule over me then i will be blameless innocent of great transgression i don't know what version yeah that's the same one niv So this was um the seven, and then number verse 14 says if you could put 14 may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight o lord my rock and my redeemer so this is what the lord is saying uh, uh, telling us in psalms 119 as the psalmist was praying keep your servant also from willful sins may they not rule over me so purity is when you don't allow willful sin to rule over you. You may sin once in a while maybe because you were angry, you said something that you shouldn't say, you did something that you shouldn't do, but there is willful sinning that cannot be part of our lives as believers. And so this 
servant of God was saying, do not let me wander from your commands, neither by ignorance nor by willful disobedience. Do we have willful disobedience? May the Lord help us. Maybe we'll have an opportunity to confess because the, Lord, the Bible says in 1 John 1, 9 that if we confess our sins, then he's gracious to forgive us. And so that's what we must do. We'll tell the Lord to forgive us. Where we have willfully disobeyed and where the body has been weak, I even prayed that prayer for myself this morning. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. We must pray that the Lord gives us the strength to do that which we must do and that we will not continue with willful, willful disobedience. Where we continue to watch things that we shouldn't watch. Where we continue to listen to things that we shouldn't be listening to. Willful disobedience. May the Lord deliver us from it. And then the psalmist, of course, continues to say, Your word I have treasured and stored in my heart that I may not sin against you. So we must continue to feed ourselves with the word. Allow the word of God to transform us. Ask the Lord to help us to understand this word so that it transforms us from within. And I was just preparing this message. I listened to a very interesting sermon uh, of a man of God who was saying that he's been a pastor for many years and he has seen people who are wonderfully transformed within a short time of them coming to the Lord. They have managed to tame their wild tongue. They've managed to tame their mannerism. They have been transformed. They have grown from grace to grace. And he said, yet he has also seen people who have been in the church for many years and have not transformed a bit, not at all. And he said, one thing he has seen at the center of the difference between these two people is how they take the word of God and how they have allowed the word of God to transform their lives. That if you fail to embrace the word of God and let that word transform the way you think, transform the way you look at things, then it is likely that you remain in this house and the only thing that will change is that you'll be an older person but the same person over the years. May the Lord help us. And as he was saying it, it reminded me of some of the great men of God in our lives. Just listening to Apostle John Kimani Williams' testimony, how he got saved and within a very short time, he was soaking in in the word of God, reading the word of God. And within a very short time, he was already beginning to preach. Many of you may also know uh, the late Miles Monroe, who also said at the age of 15, he made a commitment to read through the Bible every year. And he says every year he bought a new Bible. Because as he read his Bible, he would write every revelation that he got, every new insights that he got on his Bible. And therefore he could not use the same Bible the next year. So every year he would buy a new Bible from the age of 15. And he said, did you understand? He said, no, I didn't understand everything. But my target then was not to understand. My target was to read through. Because I also understood what the Bible says, that the Holy Spirit will bring to remembrance that which you have learned. So meaning if you have not learned much, then the Holy Spirit will not have, it will not have anything to bring to remembrance, to help you come to remembrance. And so he said he made a commitment to read through the Bible every year. And it is interesting when, when uh, the servant of God, Ben Hinn, was in town, he said, he told the pastors, not once, you have to read three times. You have to read through the Bible three times. That's what I heard him say. <laughs> that's a new target. That's a very tall order. But that's what he said he does, the word of God. So we must allow the word of God. He says, your word I have treasured and stored in my heart that may not sin against you. Because many times the Lord will remind you. 
the verses will come. You may not remember exactly where it is, but at least you remember phrases from different texts and you can now easily go and research and do a little bit more. So we must commit to ourselves to just reading the word of God and, and find a program that we can use. Uh, and we already have one in the Nuggets of Wisdom, those that are following it. We are day 70 today. So it, it is something that we can easily follow through and read through the Bible. Do not worry too much if you do not understand. But be committed to read the word. You're storing in, you're storing in, you're storing in. And as you do that, the word will continue to help us not to sin against the Lord. Then it says in verse 12, Blessed and reverently praised are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. So we must continue to ask the Lord to teach us. But I want to major on um, 13 and 14. 13 says, with my lips, I have told all the ordinances of your mouth. So it just in um, Psalms 119 verse 13 there. That with my lips, have I told all the ordinances of your mouth. In other words, we must continue to declare the word of God. We must continue to worship. We must continue to worship the Lord. We must continue to praise God. And in doing so, I like the revelation we've gotten this morning uh, through the worship leader from Cindy Jacobs about clapping our hands and what it means when we are clapping our hands. We must continue to praise and worship God. And I still got this revelation this week about worship. He said, if I am struggling with a matter right now in my life, I need to ask myself, how did I get here? How did I get to the struggle that I'm currently having? Let me give an example that many well, women sometimes deal with. Low self-esteem, for example. We must ask ourselves, why do I struggle from low self-esteem? And go back to the, uh, to the source, the likely source of this low esteem and say, what is it? Was I told maybe that I'm not good enough? Was I told I amount to nothing? Were words spoken over my life that became a stronghold in my life that now I struggle with these issues of self-esteem? And the, 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 the revelation was that, is that it's like a form of worship. I'm worshiping what I was told and believing it to be true. Uh, because uh, it has become an idol in my life. I'm giving an example of self-esteem. For you, it could be something else. It could be uh, sexual addiction. It could be, uh, you know, uh, whatever it is that you're struggling, struggling with. The idea, the revelation that the servant of God had was that you, you worshipped yourself into it. So you have allowed this thing called low self-esteem or this thing called sexual addiction or this thing called uh, promiscuity that you have worshipped it and said this is part of me I love it, it you, you allow it to continue to be an idol and to continue controlling your life and so we must ask ourselves then how do I get away from it and it was amazing that we must worship ourselves out of the addictions that we have. We must worship ourselves out. And how do we do it? We worship God. When the Lord tells me I'm fearfully and wonderfully made, I believe it. You know? When the Lord tells me I'm more than a conqueror, then I believe it. When the Lord tells me I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength, then I believe it. So I'm worshipping something different. I move my focus from what I've always worshipped, that uh, I always mess up, I'm not good enough, I'm this, I'm this. I move from that worship to now worshipping God and asking and believing what he has already said. So verse 13 is saying, With all my lips I've told of all the ordinances of your mouth. So with my lips, I will begin to declare the ordinances of the Lord that he has declared and that is what he has said in his word. I will worship myself in, out 
of those addictions that I struggle with. Verse 14 says, I have rejoiced in the way of your testimonies as much as in all riches. I like the NLT version, which says, I have rejoiced in your laws as much as in riches. How many want to be rich? How many want to be financially independent? All right. We all want to be financially independent. We want to be rich. We want to be, you know, uh, able to meet our bills. Yes. And this servant of God says, I have rejoiced in your laws as much as in riches. We all want to be rich. If you want to be rich, then you must rejoice in the law. You must rejoice in the word of God as in riches. That's the challenge we are getting this morning. And I love the song we sang this morning about Nitavua Mapambo Yangu. Vitu vyote via the money. That's what we must do. That we must rejoice in the word of God as in riches. The way we cry out to God and tell the Lord, help me Lord. That's the same way we must do in understanding the word of God. And then finally in verse 15, it says, I meditate on your precepts <clears throat> and thoughtfully regard your ways, the path of life established in your precepts. And verse 16, I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. So may the Lord help us because basically as we look at this, it's that this verse 119, it's, it says it's meditation and prayer for the law of God. Meditation and prayer for the law of God. So we must continue to allow, to meditate and to thoughtfully regard God's ways that he has established. And we must delight in his word. And as I thought about this, Another analogy I had gotten sometimes back about how do I clean myself? How do I overcome the addictions that I have? Is an example that was given of a, 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 somebody who was asked to go to the river with a sack that had had charcoal previously. So you can see a, a gunia la makae, something that had been used for charcoal. And we were told, go bring me water <laughs> with this sack. And they went out to the, to the water. And um, they're trying to get water. They go to the river. They put the sack. They step a few steps. All the water is gone, isn't it? Eh? He told, no, I told you to bring me water. So they go back again to the river. They, they fetch some water with the sack. Again, they go. After they had done that three, four times, they came and said, Sir, this is an impossible task that you have given me because it seems like I will not be able to bring you any water. And then he said, Look at the sack. How does it look? By this time, all the charcoal dust had been washed away. And this person said, that's a lesson. I knew that you are not going to be able to bring the water. But the idea is, I wanted you to see that the word of God is like water. It cleanses us. It cleanses us. Every time we feed in the word of God, some will go through, isn't it, eh? And we may not always remember. But every time we allow ourselves to soak in in the word of God, the word is cleansing us. The word is transforming us. The word is making us different. And while we might be like that uh, charcoal sack that was so black at the beginning, but every time it went to the water, it came out cleaner. Every time it went to the water, it came out cleaner until finally it was really clean that when you look at it it is clean so this is what it is 
that <clears throat> we must continue to allow the word of God to cleanse us, to purify us. And let me give uh, a disclaimer. We will not be perfect this side of heaven. We will not be perfect. But we will certainly make progress. We shouldn't be where we were last year. We shouldn't be where we were two years ago. We must make progress. That I can look back and say, see what the Lord has done. Look at what I was struggling with. I no longer struggle with this. The Lord has helped me. Look at what I was struggling with. I no longer struggle with this. The Lord has helped me. And that we will continue to testify and show what the Lord is doing in our lives. The word of God says in Matthew 5, 8, as I come towards the end, that blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. So we must continue to seek this purity. And we know now how we get this purity. Is allowing the word of God to transform us. Is allowing us to believe that indeed we can be uh, transformed. Is allowing the, the, the spirit of God to continue working in our lives. And transforming us and making us what we ought to be. Let me therefore begin to summarize what we have learned this morning and just ask that the Lord will continue to minister to us and to help us in, in, in a special way. One thing that we have seen for sure is that we must continue to remember that as young people, we have great ability to learn and to be transformed. In fact, the, the, the word of God tells us in First John, I write to you young men, because you are strong and you have overcome the evil one. You know, sometimes I'd, I'd, I'd like to share with us from a place of victory, not from a place of defeat. You know, many times it's like we are so afraid young people will mess up. We are so afraid they will not do the right thing. We are so afraid that uh, they don't have the ability to make the right decision. But the truth of the matter, the word of God says, I write to you, young men, because you are strong and you have overcome the evil one. So remember that you are strong. Remember that you have the ability to overcome. Do not allow, as we speak to you as older people sometimes, that we, we, we feel like you, mean, you make a wrong. No, as long as you're willing to learn and as long as you're willing to grow, just like the analogies we have given, then indeed you're going to be successful. The only problem is when you become stubborn, stiff-necked, know it all sometimes, that I know so much, or, and, and you have attitudes that will, will limit you from becoming what you are meant to be. So that's number one. Young people, you are strong and you have overcome the evil one. Number two, of course, is that study and meditate on the word of God. We must continue to study and meditate on the word of God. And this is, this is the recipe for success. And it is consistent in scripture. Even Joshua 1.8, he was told, be strong and very courageous. Meditate on the word. I think it's Joshua 1.8 and 9. It says, meditate on the word of God. Yes, that it is. Do not let this book of the Lord depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. So we must continue to meditate on this word. And then I think the next verse is the one that says, be strong and very courageous. Have I not commanded you? So we must continue to meditate. To meditate on this word. And we, we will be successful in all that we do. Then, when we meditate on it, let's believe in it. Let's believe what the word of God says. You know, sometimes we may read, we may meditate, but we may not believe it. I don't know whether it was a true story, but recently I read something that was doing rounds in the social... Yes, it was a true story that happened here in Kenya. 
We were doing uh, something that was doing rounds in the social media of a young man who decided to pull uh, a joke on the church. And he went, uh, I think, uh, in one of these traditional churches, somewhere in the media room, and took the mic when people were praying and spoke like we hear God speak in movies. Eh? And <laughs> he shouted, you know, uh, a scary uh, voice says, this is the end of the world, or something like that. Eh? So he shouted, and you know, he boomed. He, uh, he had put up the volume, eh? So he boomed all at once, you know, making a declaration like God. And he says, you should have seen, <laughs> you should have seen the people breaking their legs as they were running away <laughs> from church. Actually, it was sad because some people got hurt in the process. But why was that? The pastor uh, was actually very close to the door before he, he stopped to ask <laughs> what is this happening and he looked around because the young man started laughing when he saw everybody is now running <laughs> running away you know he realized he, he had managed to to pull the joke on the entire congregation and of course it's the way we can react eh? uh, naturally if you are in danger there's a way that you would have to react in, initially but I think I bring that example to say that we must believe the word of God in fact when I was preparing this I asked the Lord <laughs> help me and help my unbelief that's what I told the Lord help my unbelief where I still struggle with certain things believing that you are able to help me and to deal with, with them because many times we may have reached a place where we hear but we don't really believe you you ask is it really possible and that's why sometimes that that can that young man was able to pull that joke that shouting that this is the end of the world and uh, he, he wants to see those those, are, those who are righteous remaining in the hall so and everybody was running away but we need to believe that what we we know of the lord is true and finally, uh, we must continue to, to pray uh, that for understanding, to obey the word. And we must refuse to be ignorant. We must refuse to be ignorant. And finally, my last verse and my last thought to us this morning. We must continue to anticipate the second coming of the Lord. And in anticipating that second coming of the Lord, it will help us to purify ourselves. 1 John 3, 2 and 3. 1 John 3, 2 and 3. Um, maybe we can get that verse. It says, Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Verse 3. Everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. So we must continue to remember that we are sojourners and we are, we are on a journey, on a journey to be in our eternal home. And so let like that, that anticipation that anticipation of the second coming continue to help us to purify ourselves because it says we are children of God that's what we are we already are children of God because we have believed in him but we must continue that anybody who has this hope purifies himself so because we have this hope that we will see him again then we must continue to purify ourselves in preparation of meeting with him i end with a quote that purity is not a long struggle against that which is impure or forbidden purity is not a long struggle against that which is impure or forbidden rather it is singleness of heart. Singleness of heart. Knowing that I have made a commitment. 
I have made an allegiance to one Lord and one master. And I'll do all that it takes to live pure for him and for his sake. Shall we pray? Our Father and our God, we just want to thank you so very much for the privilege and the opportunity to share your word and to hear from you. We are forever grateful for this great privilege. And we want to pray that you continue to minister to each and every one of us, O oh Lord, even as we purify ourselves, purify our thoughts, purify our hearts, and purify our resolve to follow you. We thank you and we honor you, for this is our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen.